What's up, everybody? And, you know, I thought about waiting on this pay-per-view, and I'm going to, you know, cut it here and cut it straight. There will be no live reactions for this roadblock, whatever, end of the line pay-per-view. And then again, I don't think it was worth the reactions, really. And this show tonight, I really saw mostly from my phone. So I really didn't care what happened in the show. And it was in Pittsburgh, I believe, Pennsylvania. And this show, my God, where we begin? You know, let's, let's, let's kick off the show with Big Cass versus Rusev, which really didn't go that long, really. It ended in a countout with Rusev winning because I um, pretty much they went into the crowd and I felt like that 10 count went really quick. And it pretty much ended up with Rusev getting the ring after uh, Cass needed to check on Enzo after he got knocked down by Rusev and kind of just forgot the last second to get in the ring. Match didn't really go nowhere. It was pretty much quick, and I'm sure I'll continue this feud tomorrow night on Raw because there wasn't really much to say about that. Uh, the tag team championships on the line: Big E and uh, with New Day, all of them versus Shazal and Sam Sheamus for the tag team championships. And very, I would say, overbooked finished in a way, but it was a lot of near falls and surprising surprises that nobody didn't expect. And, you know, Big E, my God, at least he changed up doing that spear through the, the ropes, but usually he falls on his face most of the time, but it looks like he kind of falls to his side or his back, because he usually damn near breaks his neck doing whatever type of crazy dive he's doing to get to the outside of the ring. Uh, pretty much, it was a really good match between the, for the Tag Team Championships, and pretty much would be the biggest surprise that people kind of took, took for a minute to get into, because... You think the New Day was really going to win, but like there a lot of near falls, a lot of Xavier Woods getting involved, helping the team, and even taking a bullet for Kofi with the bro kick, and which was really smart at the end, which we did crown new tag team champions tonight, but when Cesaro, I guess, was going to go for a tag, but he pulled his hand back, and pretty much, um, Sheamus, it was Sheamus, yes, Sheamus, Cesaro pretty much took the bullet right there. Because uh, uh, he pretty much, um, he went for a tag, but Cesaro went in, and then he pretty much got hit with a trouble in Paradise. Then after that, uh, Kofi pretty much, not Co yeah, Kofi went for a trouble in Paradise, he hit Cesaro with it, and then Sheamus came in, and pretty much got the pin after hitting up with a uh, bro kick. Or got on top and got the pin, really. So, it was a very um, surprising win, which I'm pretty much everyone was really shocked, really, but... I wasn't really shocked that they lost the tag team titles. They could have kept this going if they wanted to, because the New Day are now technically the longest reigning tag team champions in WWE. But very, um, pretty clever for a title change at the end. But I kind of knew after they beat the record and beat Demolition, I think people knew they were going to lose the tag team titles. I kind of saw that coming a mile away. They could have continued this thing if they wanted to and drag it along. And still have them hold the titles and give them more days. But um, they, I think it was time to end it, really. I'm sure a lot of people were really hoping it was going to lose the title, but they really were going to do this whole demolition record. But now, since they beat it, I guess they didn't have any other choice but to just drop the titles to Cesaro and Sheamus. And pretty much after that, the New Day looked shocked and they handed the titles to Cesaro and Sheamus. And Cesaro gave them a hug and Sheamus took the titles and started posing with him. So it was. Very surprising. Took them in for the crowd to get into, but it was a good little start off to the show with them becoming new tag team champions. Let's see how long they can keep this Cesaro and Sheamus thing going, really, because I didn't think it would go this long. Uh, Sami Zayn went against Braun Strowman in a 10 minute time limit match where most of this entire match was just Braun Strowman beating the shit out of Sami Zayn. And then Mick Foley came out, was gonna, I guess going to throw a towel in, but when he got down to the last two minutes, um, it was pretty much Sami Zayn hitting every move he could by not with, you know, Strowman going through the barricade, knocking himself through there, and then Sami Zayn was just hitting him with anything and dodging moves and just hitting him with a halluva kick. Maybe, was he ever going to get the pin and pin Strowman? I highly doubt he was ever going to pin him. But Zayn pretty much got... At least got some offense near the end of the match because, you know, you had Strowman there arguing with Foley and everything. And was Foley really going to throw the towel in? I don't know. But he, I guess he survived. He survived 10 minutes. Was he, I don't know what Sami Zayn was going to get out of this, but 
he survived 10 minutes with Braun Strowman, so it could have went quick, but hey, it went the whole 10 minutes. I don't know what will happen next, but hey, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, so Seth Rollins against Chris Jericho. You know, let me, let me say this thing about Pittsburgh real quick before we continue on. Pittsburgh was a very quiet crowd tonight. The crowd was like, they didn't give a shit to you out this show. They sat on their hands most of the time. Just sat on their hands. Like, gave no fucks. And this is one of the matches they gave no care where people were just sitting there wondering what happens next. And some people, this, this is the same crowd from Royal Rumble 2014 where they pretty much went nuts when Daniel Bryan wasn't even in the Royal Rumble and damn near hijacked the show that year. But some say these were casual fans tonight, not the hardcore fans of the Rumble. And don't get me wrong, this wasn't a bad match, but I kind of knew the finish was coming when Owens came out and pretty much distracted the ref until Rollins took him out. Jericho tried to tell Owens to stay away, and then pretty much Rollins got the pedigree and beat Jericho again. Which some people wonder, what was this match really for? Where was this going to go? So any of these two getting a title shot or anything, it, was, it wasn't a bad match, but the crowd just gave no fucks it looked like. Like, they were still on Seth Rollins' side, but it's like... Did anybody give a shit about this match with him and Jericho? Like, it kind of came and went there, but I think people knew Rollins was winning, and that was it. Uh, triple threat for the Triple Threat match for the Cruiserweight Championship, which went really quick, by the way, between Rich Swan, Brian Kendrick, and TJ Perkins. Pretty much ending with a double super kick on Brian Kendrick, and then um, Rich Swan doing that, whatever that kick he does roundhouse and beating Perkins to retain the title, which kind of went quick, but I think the one of the biggest surprises after was the return of Neville, which we barely see nowadays, which he did come back, but no one knew where he went. Neville pretty much came out, went full heel turn, and people were saying, thank you, Neville, but he pretty much came out and beat up both Perkins and Rich Swan, which hopefully Neville gets something out of this, really, because Neville doesn't do shit on this show when you look at it. So we know Neville, Neville has had a hard time ever since he's came to the main roster because usually he's just missed the fib flippy flips and hopefully he can get over and some people say he's the man that created for the, I'm sorry gravity for guys that I, what I was about to say now was the man that created the guy that people put him at because like Neville is just there like he does nothing and hopefully this heel turn will do something better for him and I guess people wonder why haven't they put him in the cruiserweight division I don't know if it was his ankle again or whatever because he did suffer an injury this year, earlier, that's why he missed out on WrestleMania, and maybe he can do better as a heel, and we'll, we'll see where that goes, it was good to hear Austin Aries on commentary for a Cruiserweight match, I was like, I think he was switching a lot of commentary team matches tonight, because I know they took Saxton out and put um, Austin Aries in there, but hopefully Neville can do something, because Neville has never really gone nowhere really. He's gone nowhere ever since he came onto the main roster. He's just been there. He's Mr. Flippity Flips right there. And I really thought this it would have been a better idea if they made him and Zayn the tag team. I felt like that could have went really good. Uh, Sasha Banks went against Charlotte in an Iron Man match for the Women's Championship. 30 minutes. Another match with the crowd kind of sat on their hands in a way. And first fall went to Charlotte in the natural selection off the top rope. Sasha got the second one with a, um, pretty much a, with the head scissors into a pin. Sasha was able to then get the bank statement. And it was pretty much two to one after that. But when we kept getting more and more down, which the crowd looked like they got into it, but um, we kind of came to the end. Charlotte was doing everything she could to make Sasha pretty much uh, lose or tap out, but it took her forever to get that figure four, and there were some great transitions and submission moves in this match, but when it came to the last three seconds, Sasha tapped out to the figure eight, which was like at what, 29.57 really, and since it was that, we had to have a overtime, which JoJo also kind of messed up, said, didn't. she said, uh, Charlotte has scored, gained another win, which is very sound, just kind of sounded weird on her part. So, it, it, they pretty much won the overtime mode. And the next win would determine the new champion. And pretty much Charlotte was going through the bad leg throughout the match. And Sasha tried to roll her up multiple times. But Sasha hit the back saber and tried to go for the bank statement. But Charlotte grabbed her leg and just did what she could. 
did what she could to break it out. I guess once her foot hit uh, Sasha, I don't know if it was in the nose or there or the mouth, Sasha was bleeding heavily, but for some reason, commentary team did not even acknowledge she bled. Like, okay, she's bleeding, but no one didn't acknowledge it. It's just like, it was just, alright, she's bleeding, who gets the fuck, really? Like, they didn't care. But Charlotte was able to pretty much hit the figure eight, and Sasha tapped out. And once again, we go back to playing hot potato with this title. And I've probably stated this before, really. Uh, I may have got the finish wrong, but I knew Charlotte was winning this title back. It just kept telling me they're going to play hot potato with this shit again. And she's going to get the title. And then again, a majority of this crowd, once again, sat through their hands through most of it until nearly the end. Was it a, a, a better match? Yeah, for the Iron Iron Man, Iron Woman? Yeah, some, they sometimes forget the knowledge. Acknowledge that it was Bailey versus Sasha that had an Iron Man match before in NXT, which they finally mentioned tonight. But, I don't know. I guess this was the last time. I don't know when is the last time with these two. They last so many times. Say, it's the last time. It's the last time. It's the last time. Next thing you know, we got another match between these two, and I'm sure Sha Sasha's going to win the belt again in a few weeks and that. So I, I knew Sasha was going to win. I mean, Sasha was going to lose the title, and they just want to keep Charlotte's pay-per-view win streak up. And she is a four-time women's champion now. So some say she'll do the thing like Ric Flair with the four like this for four horsemen or four horse women. And what well, she's 15 and 0 right now, they're giving her like a, almost like an Undertaker-like type of streak, but pay-per-view-wise. And, and I, I, I just don't understand this feud anymore. I'm not saying this was a bad feud, but this shit just kind of went to lower and lower because of the hot potatoes, these damn gimmick matches, and it's like you knew who was going to win. It just became very predictable. When the first time Sasha won the belt, yeah, we were all excited. But when the second time kind of came around, it was almost like just a way to gain, desperate enough to gain some ratings. And then when the third time came around, it's like, what the fuck? Like, it's like, okay, you lose your hometown, she's gonna lose in her hometown. And, like I said before, I knew Charlotte was winning this belt back tonight. I just knew it was gonna happen. It may have not been the finish, what I said about Ric Flair gonna be interfering in that. But, I just knew she was gonna win the title, and I think people were just tired of playing this hot potato one. Hot potato two, hot potato three, hot potato four title. Like, they want them to be Trish and Lita so bad. Like, there's a difference between making history and forcing it down people's throats. Okay? Like, enough. Because even I had to say it before. What happened to Bailey? Bailey looked like she just disappeared when Bailey looked like she was about to get a title shot. But they went back to Sasha and Charlotte again. Nia Jax, nowhere to be fucking found. Which, I don't know where she's been since, like, damn near after Survivor Series. Like, where did she go? When the name after Survivor Series, there was, like, one wall where she threatened Sasha and disappeared for the past three, two, three weeks now. Bailey looks like they're just wasting her time because she actually was going to get a get title shot, but that got copped out for some reason. They didn't go more towards that no more. And it's just like, why do we keep doing this feud? Like, where are the other women on Raw? Alicia Fox continues to lose to Bailey. Um, I don't even know Summer Rae was still there. Yeah, Paige. I don't know if she'll ever be back, to be honest, but technically she is. Because Paige, all I hear about Paige nowadays is her and Dario getting in some trouble. I think in trouble recently in Mexico and, and stuff. So, it's like, can we go somewhere with this feud where it doesn't have to keep playing Hot Potato 1 and Hot Potato 2? And we got to the main event. Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns. Oh, boy. Um, Reigns booed out the building. Booed out the building. <laughs> Kevin Owens came out, and uh, this match, you know, is like, um, you know, Roman sucks, let's go Roman. I, I, I just, this match wasn't bad, per se, even though I did like when Kevin Owens had to put Roman through the table two times, but my god, we have to hit Roman with everything but the kitchen sink to beat him. And I guess Kevin Owens was about to cheat and use the title, but Roman speared him. Jericho came out then and pretty much hit a code breaker on Kevin Owens, which Kevin Owens retained the titles. And then they're just best friends again. We, we think they're going to betray each other and go against each other because Jericho's getting ready to turn on Owens. But, nah, it was a way to keep, help Kevin Owens keep the title and still 
you know, they're, 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 they're best friends again now, so. Well, I guess they were never gonna break, break up, I guess. Seth Rollins then came out, which Roman, my god, he was hitting so many spears on Kevin Owens, making no sense. They did a powerbomb Jericho through the table, and then they chased Kevin Owens, and then they pretty much went shield mode and put uh, Kevin Owens through the table, announced table at the top of the stage then. And I don't think the crowd cared. Like, it looked like the crowd, like I said, they were quiet again. Like, no one didn't care. The crowd was just quiet on their, their hands. Like, just did not give a fuck, really. Just, just nothing. But it's almost like it, some people think this felt like another Monday Night Raw episode than a pay per view. It's almost like they were just setting up for a, a prior tag team match with Owens and Jericho versus um, Rollins and Reigns. It looked like they set it up for that. And to, just to say, throughout the whole night, the only things that were really talked about, and it, my god, this pay per view was not really that great, but it was cool to see Neville return and go heel mode. And the tag team champions did finally swap, and it was a t it was a title change. Was the women's match good? Ye yes, it was. But the hot potato thing is gone on long enough. Maybe hopefully Charlotte moves on to something else. But I do feel like it's going to be Sasha or Charlotte again because really it's not, it looks like that's all that they're depending on. And this is just gone on long enough. I feel like this feud should have ended a long time ago because this shit's getting ridiculous. And my god, Roman, how strong are you going to make Roman look tonight? I was really thought they were going to change the title. But not nah, interference. Just an interference again. Disqualification. So, I don't know. They just have Reigns kill Owens so much. And just to pretty much to kill him again. Put him through the tables tonight. Like, they booked Kevin Owens to look like an idiot had the time. Like, idiot had the time. I would still believe he's Jericho's sidekick. Because at first I thought it was the other way around. But it looks like I feel like Jericho was become the leader. And I feel like Owens was a sidekick. But Roadblock, my god, this just, I don't know, these raw pay-per-views are just getting more ridiculous and ridiculous as it goes. I did not put any live reactions. Like I said, I watched this stuff and again, I did on my whole phone, so I just, just, just fuck it, really. And this is the review, but I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace.